Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. This is Evelyn Hershkowitz, Rita Services Librarian at the Syosset Public Library. This is the Turn the Page podcast. And today we are lucky enough to have with us Fiona Davis. Her newest book, which comes out June 13th, is called The Spectacular. And The Spectacular is Radio City Music Hall and those famous Rockettes. So it is such a great story. It, it flies. It reads so quickly. It's a fabulous summer beach read. So I highly recommend it. So let me just tell you a little bit about Fiona. Fiona Davis is the New York Times bestselling author of seven historical fiction novels set in iconic New York City buildings, including the Magnolia Palace, the Dollhouse, the Address, and the Lions of Fifth Avenue, which was a Good Morning America book club pick. Her novels has, have been chosen as One Book, One Community Reads, and her articles have appeared in publications like the Wall Street Journal and O, oh, the Oprah Magazine. She first came to New York as an actress, but fell in love with writing after getting a master's degree at Columbia Journalism School. Her books have been translated into over 20 languages, and she is based in New York City. So Fiona, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. You're so welcome. I am loving the spectacular. It is, it's just great. It's just moves and it's, it's just, it's a great summer read. It's really, it's a great read period, but at this summer, I think it's great. will be plenty of people sitting on the beach reading the book. That's what I want to hear. That's great. That's the way I wrote it. Yep. Why don't you let everybody know what it's about? Yeah, sure. It, it takes place at Radio City Music Hall in the 1950s from the point of view of Marion, who is a dancer who wants to be a Rockette and goes against her father's wishes to audition. And it, it's kind of about her, her story about auditioning and getting into the troupe and what it's like and the challenges of being part of such a precision dance company. And then at the same time, um, there at the time in real life, there was this guy named the Mad Bomber who was terrorizing the city by planting bombs everywhere, including two at Radio City Music Hall. And so I decided to kind of wrap that into the storyline. So in the story, Marion um, gets caught up in the hunt for what I call the Big Apple Bomber um, and for very personal reasons. And she teams up with a brilliant and introverted psychiatrist named Peter to try and figure out who's setting these bombs. And the two of them um, get caught up in that hunt. And it I like to say it's kind of glamor, it's historical fiction, it's a thriller, it's a mystery, and it's a romance. Yes, it is all of those things. And it was, it's great. I mean, taking place like all your books in New York City at great land, you know, historic landmarks. It's it's wonderful. I read the one about the New York Public Library, which was so fabulous. The Lions of Fifth Avenue, that one was just so great. And I just want to mention Fiona was here with us back in 2017 when she first wrote her first book, The Dollhouse, and the address was coming out at this right after that, her second book. And she was here for our year-end Rita Services celebration, which was so great to have her. So, and, and I, yeah, and I have to just say, libraries and librarians have been so crucial to my success. You know, wow. it's word of mouth, and it's the librarians and and telling readers, oh, you should check out this book. That have really, you know, is why that's why I'm on my seventh book. <laughs> well, thank you. We we love your writing and your books, and we're so happy that you're here with us today. Now, for those of you who love to do book clubs and discuss the books. This is going to be a great book discussion. Um, all of you Syosset patrons, of course, we're going to get the book in print, but it's also going to be available on Overdrive, which is Libby now, Overdrive Libby, as a book and as an audio book. And I've been listening to the audio book. It's great. It's a really great audio book. So I do both. I listen in the car, jump into the house and read the book. So I oh, do yeah. both. It goes that much quicker when you, you're doing it both ways because you're always engaged with the book. So absolutely. Great one. So tell everybody what made you pick Radio City Music Hall, the Rockettes, and that era that you picked. Yeah. You know, I was trying to think of where to set my next book and I don't plan ahead. So it's not like I have a list of iconic buildings that I okay. will work my way down. So I was kind of open and I got this email through my author website from a woman named Sandy. And she said, I'm in my eighties. I'm a former Rockette 
And if you want to know all about the secrets about Radio City, you should call me. And of course, I had to. And we had this great conversation and she just talked. She had so many great stories and she'd met her husband, Bob, there when they were both 19. He ran the lighting board. And so the two of them had just this incredible mass of information um, that was really helpful. And then from there, I, I went on and interviewed a number of other Rockettes who danced there. Sandy danced there um, in 59 to 62. And there were others that danced there in the 40s, some more recently. And they all talked about just what a sisterhood it was to, to be a Rockette. And I thought this is just a great great concept and I have to I have to do it even though I was really intimidated because I am not a dancer and that is you know a little out of my wheelhouse but I just talked to people who knew what they were talking about and that helped yeah because there's a lot of dance moves and dance language and lingo and everything in there so they definitely that was the research you did yeah yeah and it was so great because they all had these great stories like one talked about you know walking down fifth avenue in the middle of fifth avenue at 2 a.m in the morning linked arms with her fellow dancers and they were just singing at the top of their lungs and this was in the 50s when women were supposed to be you know wives and secretaries and and uh, nurses and here they were independent making money dancing on this iconic stage and the just the joy the way they they talk about the experience is just so wonderful it's it's and I hope that comes out in the book yes it absolutely does and so many of the places that you talked about are real. I mean, like the hotel that they, they lived in and these places are real. Yeah. There's this place called the rehearsal club. It was known mm-hmm. for known as, and it was right around the corner on 53rd street. And it was a place, a boarding house for women who were pursuing a career in the performing arts. So you had to be between 18 and 25, neither married nor divorced. You had to be either taking classes, looking for an agent, rehearsing or, or performing. And so you had to be, you know, doing something. And in fact, the movie Stage Door that starred um, Catherine Hepburn and Ginger Rogers was based on the rehearsal club. Oh, oh that's so and, great. And it was, you know, some of the, yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. And it was, um, you know, some of the people who stayed there were Carol Burnett, um, uh, Diane Keaton, Sandy Duncan. There's just wow. this incredible, you know, a number of women who who lived there. And it was just very... I, I thought, what a great place to include, you know, because a lot of the Rockettes stayed there because it was so convenient. $18 a week. How could you go uh, wrong? Yeah. In the 1950s. And you got two meals a day yeah. a week and, you know, and, and, uh, and that the Rockettes eat much. So, <laughs> right. Although I think they eat a lot because they, you know, back then Radio City, this is what surprised me. You know, I know it is a concert hall, mm-hmm. right? Where you go and see concerts, but back then it was a movie house. And right. so there were four shows a day and, if you bought a, a ticket to the movie, you got a ticket to the stage show. And that was usually themed on the movie. So say it was a John Wayne movie, that would be like a cowboy theme for the Rockettes and for the choral ensemble. And there was a ballet core. And so uh-huh. you could watch that as well as your movie. And so they dance four shows a day and they would do that for three or four weeks at a time. And then they get a week off. So ruling, ruling. schedule. Oh Truly. Wow. I don't know how they did it. Uh, do you think they do that still to today? Is it still that? It's not year round. You know, the, they do the Christmas oh, right. show there, of course, but that yeah. runs from the end of November to January 1st. And there they do about two to five shows a day. So it's still grueling, but it's not like this year round thing where you're just going nonstop. They have to have other jobs during the year, but luckily Broadway is right right there also. So I'm sure most of them are dancers on Broadway and in other productions too. Yes. Yeah. No, it's, it was, it's just such a fascinating book. It really is. It's, I mean, I never had heard of that mad bomber. I mean, I grew up here on Long Island my whole life and know tons about the city, never heard of it. Yeah. That's what surprised me. You know, I always look for something to kind of anchor the story in the decade. So for like the lines of fifth Avenue, it was the heterodoxy club, which was this club for women down in the village that really existed. Mm -hmm. And with this, I was doing research and I learned that in the late, in the, 56 at the end of that year the police were doing this huge push to find the mad bomber because he'd been setting bombs for 16 years he hit you know radio city music hall twice he hit grand central penn station just the new york public library Mm -hmm. and he'd set 33 bombs and injured 15 people some seriously 
And they just couldn't figure out who he was. They had no idea. And they cracked the case by using criminal profiling for the very first time. Right. That I found that fascinating. I love criminal profiling. Yeah. I, I mean, TV show on, shows. Yeah. yeah. I love TV shows with criminal profiling. I think it's great. And it all started with this guy named James Brussel, who was a psychiatrist at Creedmoor in Queens. And he, the police came to him and said, you know, here's some letters from this crazy bomber, figure out who he is. And he came up with a list that was so specific to the point where his last thing was, he'll be wearing a double-breasted suit and it will be buttoned. And I won't give anything away. And but he'll live with his female relative. Yeah, he'll live with an older like female that. relative. He'll be Roman <laughs> Catholic. He'll be from Eastern Europe. Like it was, he, he got all this from these letters basically. Right. And and then they caught him, which was amazing. Yeah, I I love that criminal profiling part of it. I think that was that was really great, really great. So it was easy to do research for this book, huh? It wasn't a difficult thing. <laughs> the Rockettes and it was so much fun. You know, talking to the Rockettes, you'd learn things like, you know, you you you're looking for those details that really ground the story and and ground the reader. And so I'd I'd learn things like. Um, there was one conductor that the last show of the day, he'd speed up so he could catch his train home. And so here are these dancers and they do 600 kicks a day when they're doing these four show days. And there they had to do it faster and faster because he couldn't <laughs> catch his train. And there were just really fun things like that. And you learn, you know, that it's this illusion that they're all the same person when they're standing in that kick line. And in fact, the taller ones are in the middle and the shorter ones are at the end. And then the hemlines are all even. And so it gives the illusion and the same with when they do the kick line, you know, you, it looks like they're kind of, their hands are on each other's backs, but in, in fact, there's a good few inches in between the hand of the dancer and the back of the one next to her. Oh. And so it, it's this huge illusion that they do and they make it look so effortless and they smile mm -hmm. the entire time. Yeah. I don't know how their feet aren't killing them because if I had to wear those shoes and dance, I don't think. They have a lot of stamina, that's for sure, to be able to do that, especially back in the day where they did it so much more. Yeah. Very difficult. Very difficult. Wow. Sure. Yeah. Did you get a tour of Radio City Music Hall? I did. You know, they were, they were for a while, COVID got in the way. Oh. Um, and then I was able to see the spectacular, the the Christmas show that they do, which was really fun. And a lot, some of those numbers, like the the Toy Soldiers number where they fall, Mm -hmm. you know, the cannon shoots them and they there's that wonderful as they slowly all fall down um that's from one of the very first christmas Boys in babeland yeah that they're all from you know a lot of these these numbers that they do are from the past and they've just it's a tradition to do them um and so yeah yeah it, it's really it was just a, a fun fun thing to to rehearse to to read about and and write about and I, I admire them so much. Yeah. So did you always want to be an author? Was that something? No, 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 not at all. I couldn't imagine writing a book. Oh, I wow. like reading them. No, not at all. Not until I was in my mid forties. And then I just stumbled on the idea for the dollhouse, which was my first book based at the Barb's on hotel for women. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, you know, I, I want to read this book, but I, and I'd been a journalist for a while, so I knew how to write. I knew how to shape a story. And I just thought, you know, I'd love to try and write this book. So I took workshops and learned everything I could and came up with this book and, and sort of suddenly my career went, whoop, now you're going to go do this. <laughs> wow. That's great. That's yeah. Great. And you know what? I always say, you know, I couldn't have written this book, any of these books when I was in my twenties, I didn't, I hadn't lived life enough. You know, I hadn't suffered or had had intense joy. And I think it's only later that you can put these things into coherent sentences. So, you know, never, if you have a book in you, it's never too late. Yeah, a lot of people, their first books are later in life, which is, it's great. It's second career, third career. It's a wonderful thing. Us librarians love that. We love all these debut authors and, you know, it's great. Yeah. That you look at like Bonnie Garma, Garbus, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That um, lesson's in chemistry. chemistry. She's in her uh, 60s. Good for her. Yeah. And it's going to become a, I think it's a Netflix series or one yeah. of the channels. I forget which one. Have any of your books been optioned? Um, Not yet, Um, but you know, there's interest. So we'll see what happens. Oh, good. Oh, good it, luck. It, they're tricky because they're usually two time periods and they're both time periods in the past. And mm -hmm. that can be expensive. 
you know, if you're right. asking to do, you know, like the 1950s and then the 1920s, it's, it's tough. Yeah. Um, but we'll see what happens. You know, it, yeah. there, there's so much going on and there's such a demand, I think, for historical fiction on the screen because people love it. Like the gambit right. or Queen's Gambit and the crown. And there's so much, it's yeah. really wonderful. Well, right now with the writer's strike though, it's a problem. I know. Yeah, yeah. Everything's on hold. And, yeah. and luckily, luckily you authors are not striking too. So no. at least we still have books. <laughs> no, we're, we're not, we're not that organized to yeah. become a community. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you guys have to worry that much about that chap GT or whatever. You have to write your books. You really mm-hmm. got to we'll get see. them out there. Are you yeah. working on anything now? I am. I am. The next book is set at the Met Museum. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that takes place um, in two time periods. It'll be in the 1970s, and the 1930s. It's from the point of view of an assistant curator in the Egyptian wing. Okay. And, and okay. also the assistant who works for the Met Gala, which oh. is party of the year so it's I, I like really glamour and mummies so we'll see did you get to go to the last Met Gala no I wish no <laughs> I'm not on their radar just yet no, you're not on their list <laughs> I have to try and crash it you'd be better than some of the others that are on the list so. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure so are you writing a book every year is that what your schedule has been like no, no. You know, there's so much um, these days, there's so much press and kind of traveling around and giving book talks, which I really enjoy. So it's every year and a half, which okay. is, you know, really a little more manageable. Have you, were you able to travel? The last one was the Magnolia Palace, right? That was, yeah. were you able to do traveling and going all yeah. around for that book? Yeah. When it came out, we did a kind of a, a shortish tour for it, but then that just had legs where I was, you know, just to, even as, early as last month, I was in Kansas city and Florida and, and all over doing, doing book talks, which has been really fun The the, I really appreciate all the interest in that book. Mm-hmm. And that took place in where? That was at the Frick, Frick Museum, Museum, the Frick collection. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. So yeah. that, what about this one? What kind of agenda do you have going on for your tour? What are you going to be doing and going? Yeah, you know, there's a really wonderful, uh, about a two-week book tour where I'm going all over the place. And it's on my website at fionadavisbooks.com if anyone's interested. Um, and then some a few things during the summer, not that much. And then it'll it'll go back up in the fall of more, oh, okay. more touring. Yeah. So it's nice. It's kind of great because you go out of the gate really fast and then you get a little break and enjoy the summer. And then I can dive back into it. Where here locally will you be? Where in New York? Um, uh, the launch party is on um, June twelfth at Rizzoli's Bookstore in Manhattan. Oh, very nice. And that's anyone can come. It's free, and you know, please do. You can reg- registration is uh, suggested online if you go to Rizzoli Books or go to my website under the events page. So I'll be talking there. I'll be in Spring Lake, New Jersey, the next day on Tuesday, the thirteenth. Um, and then yeah, and then something's up in Westchester. And hopefully I'll get out to Long Island as well. Oh, good. That would be great. We'd love to see you out here. That would be really nice. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So when you're writing, do you also read? Do you have favorite authors? Do you read historical fiction? Do you read a different genre? What is I read, it? To do? Yeah, that's a good question. I read, it's a mix between kind of historical fiction and mystery, I'd mm-hmm. say. Right now I'm reading um, Trust by Hernan Diaz, the okay. Pulitzer Prize winner. And that is like historical fiction. I mean, it's wonderful. This Gilded Age or, you know, 1920s couple in New York City is the way it's starting out. And I know it's going to take some very interesting turns. So I'm looking forward to that. I also love like Annabelle Monaghan writes romance, Mm -hmm. romance. And I'm going to be interviewing her. Oh, good. She's great. Laura Goes Off Script was her first one. Yes. Um, I can't remember the title of the second one. Same. uh, Same time next year or same time next summer. Next summer. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to be interviewing her later on. Oh, good. Yeah. That's, yeah. She, she's terrific. And then Nicola Harrison. Mm-hmm. Montauk, I read that. Yeah. Yep. Her next one is her, the, the latest one is Hotel Laguna, which comes out um, in a couple of weeks, I think. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. There's so much going on. It's really, yeah. and also there's a, a wonderful contemporary fiction writer, Amy Popel. Mm-hmm. I highly recommend she's she's great she her books are musical chairs um she's just she she writes about New York and Greenwich Village in a way that's oh. her latest one's called the sweet spot right right 
Okay, it's good. Very funny. Those all sound like great, great suggestions. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. So what is your writing life like? Um, you know, I tend to, I, if I'm writing a first draft, I try and do that in the morning and get it over with. Um, and so I try and write about, uh, about 1100 words a day, four days a week, and then spend one day editing. And if I do that, I'll have a full book in about three or four months. Wow. Yeah. So it's, I, I'm trying to keep up the pace. I haven't written today, so I'm feeling very guilty. But oh, really, you can't skip even a day, huh? No, no. I, you know, especially as things ramp up for the book tour, I know I need to get it done now because I'm going to take two weeks off for. Oh, okay. For the tour. Are um, you in, you're in the New York area, right? It's a beautiful day today. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, you know, although I have a house just north of the city, so that's where I am oh, okay. now. I just had this huge thunderstorm come through. I was worried. I oh, you did. Us. Oh, huge, and the temperature just dropped like crazy. Oh man, we haven't had it yet. We're still we're still in the heat. It's coming your way. 87 degrees here. Here it's 60 something. Isn't that oh. weird? Oh We're my gosh. Yes. 20 yeah. something degrees difference because you had the thunderstorm. Yeah. yeah we haven't, I'm in the basement now, so I don't know what's going on <laughs> up there. But yeah, according to my computer, it says it's 87 degrees and sunny. Yeah. So we haven't had the thunderstorm. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's wow. going to change everything. This week's been like picture perfect. Yeah. Oh, I know. That weather. It's been gorgeous this whole week. I know. I know. It's, it's, it's we're hoping it, it keeps up. Yes. I love the spring, summer. And, yeah. My favorite seasons. Absolutely. What have you been reading that you've liked lately? What's been on oh, your what, list? Well, I just am reading Fiona Davis's is spectacular and I can't even tell you how much I love that book. So that was, that's just great. You know what? I'm having a hard time remembering. I read all the time. Um, You know what I really loved? Eternal by Lisa Scottolini. Yes. Yeah. That was an excellent book. I absolutely loved it. We had her on Zoom. We had her come and speak to uh, our audience, our patrons, which was great. Um, mm -hmm. I read a lot of rom-coms. Mm -hmm. um, Abby Jimenez's last book, Yours Truly, I really enjoyed. Oh. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, this just um, Hello Beautiful and Napolitano. Yes. I haven't oh. read that, but I... I yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm going to start Christina Lauren's new book mm -hmm. after I finish yours. I just have a few more pages left. <laughs> I tried so hard to finish it last night, but you know, it's sleep just takes over and I, I couldn't. No, couldn't it. I tried. I tried as much as I don't want it to end because I really am enjoying it. But you know, when you get to the end, you want to see what's going to happen. You know, you yeah. want to finish, but you don't want to finish. It's that kind of thing. You don't want to let it go but you need to know what's happening. So yes, I know that's the best feeling in the world, isn't it? Yeah. Some, and when you start slowing down, cause you don't want the book to end. Sometimes right. I mean, there's just like, you've mentioned all those great authors. There's just so much out there now. It's just so hard to pick and choose. It's just incredible. The amount of great authors and books. And I love speaking with all you guys. I mean, it's just fabulous. It's such a wonderful thing to be able to do. Yeah. Thank you. The for only the only silver lining out of the whole COVID thing is the fact that we never did this before. Right. You know, you, if you couldn't come to us, that yeah. was it. Right. We didn't have the ability to speak with anyone. And so this is the silver lining that I get to speak to authors that all of us do. A lot of us here all do the podcast. So it's just wonderful that we get to speak with you guys and yeah, find out why you wrote the book and what you're up to and, and that always helps when, when you're reading a book to just know that little bit extra mm -hmm. it makes it a little more fun. I find. Yeah, absolutely. What inspired them. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, what inspired you to write the first one? The the first one? Yeah. You know, I, I just learned about the, the Barbizon hotel for women and how it was set up so that, you know, it was this beautiful hotel for cultured young ladies to stay in back in the day. And, and so people like Grace Kelly and Lauren Bacall and all these famous people stayed there, but then it went condo, but there were a dozen of the old time residents still living there. And I was curious what that dynamic was like with the guy in the $17 million penthouse. And then these women who were all on the fourth floor living in, you know, studios with kitchenettes and paying $200 a month and who, who, you know, feel like they run the place because they've been there for decades. And I thought it'd be a good article 
but the women were very private and I just couldn't shake it. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll try and write a story and incorporate, you know, some research. And that led me down a great rabbit hole. And then I was off to the races. Wow. So like you said, you don't have a list of any other iconic places that you want to do. People suggest them all the time. Okay. Um, so I know, you know, I know what the, the, like the, the New York public library I wrote about because so many people had mentioned it. Um, so yeah, but it's not, you know, there's so many. Mm -hmm. um, Would you have a venture out of New York city or are you just going to stick with New York city? Yeah. Oh, I think that'd be great. I'd love to go to London or yeah. you know, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. And write about some of their iconic places. That would be. Right. And talk about old. I mean, those are really old buildings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Much older. Yeah. The United States is a baby compared to some of the other countries. So exactly. Yeah. You go to England, it's like anything that's less than 400 years old is, no, oh, that's new. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I was talking about um, historical fiction and other writers. Marie Benedict. Yes. And her partner, Victoria, um, Christopher Murray, their wow. book was fabulous. That was a great book. Yeah, The Personal Librarian. Personal Librarian, yeah. And they have a new one coming out called The First mm -hmm. Ladies, which right. I think is going to be great. It comes out later this month. Yeah, Eleanor Roosevelt, I believe it's about her and her friend. Yeah. So yeah, that one should be very good also. But yeah, there's yeah, just, they're a great there's, team. There's so much to write about and so much to read. It's just wonderful how I lucky know. we are. We really are. That's very true. Lucky. So I just want to thank you so much for speaking with us. Mm -hmm. And so the next book will be out, what, in a year and a half? Yeah. So probably January of 25, it looks wow. like. Wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, it'll be here before we know it. <laughs> you know, that doesn't sound so far away because I don't have any deadlines. <laughs> but for me, that sounds like it's a really far away. Okay. So hopefully we'll be able to speak to you then. Yes, yes, absolutely. About the that next book great. that comes out. But for all of you listening, I highly recommend The Spectacular. Um, please, if you are interested, put it on hold. We'll be happy to get you a copy when it comes out on June 13th, either print version or the ebook or the audio book that's also available on Libby. So please give us a call and we'll be happy to put it on hold for you. I want to thank Fiona Davis so much for speaking with us. Oh, and thank you, Evelyn. With your this tour. was a joy. Good luck with your tour. I hope everything goes well. Thank and you. The book is well received because it should be. It's really great. I loved it so much. Oh, I appreciate it. You made my day. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Fiona. Bye. We're going to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a great day. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.